So what does today's rally on Wall Street really pretend for 2009 and for the wider economy? Not much, if you believe our next guest. Peter Schiff is the president and chief investment strategist of Euro-Pacific Capital. He's also the author of the book, The Little Book of Bull Moves in Bear Markets, How to Keep Your Portfolio Up When the Market is Down. He was bearish about America's economic prospects long before the financial crisis hit. And as the new year begins, he's not convinced the country's economic outlook is brightening at all. I spoke to him earlier, asked him about today's rally and what it means for the markets. I think last year was the worst year ever for stocks, so it's not surprising that we're going to get a bounce. And I, I just wouldn't get too enthusiastic about it. Even if this bounce uh, carries for the next three to six months, even if the Dow were to rise above 10,000, I don't think it's going to sustain those gains. I think the lows are not in uh, for the Dow. But I think more importantly, uh, if you measure the Dow in terms of ounces of gold to try to get a real handle on the purchasing power of the Dow, I think U.S. stocks are headed a lot lower uh, in, in 2009 and in 2010 and 2011 as well. So this is just a transitory and perhaps even a psychological bounce here, people embracing the new year, the new incoming Obama administration. This will be transitory. Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, they might embrace it a little bit more. But ultimately, everything that Obama is promising is destructive to our economy and, and detrimental to the stock market. Why are you so convinced that the, the road ahead is going to be so gloomy? And there are others who share your view. And again, we have to give credit where credit is due. You did see a lot of this before other folks did. What is your own projection for the, the U.S. economy, say, through 2009? Well, you know, it's going to get worse because the government is interfering with the free market cure, and instead they're simply worsening the disease. Remember, what's happening in our economy right now is the consequence of the problem. The problem was we recklessly borrowed and spent too much money. The Fed kept interest rates too low. Wall Street took that money and speculated with it. Americans took that money and bought houses and cars and appliances and all sorts of things. We're now broke because we borrowed and spent too much money. We need to have a serious recession where we go back to saving and producing and, and not borrowing and consuming. Unfortunately, the government is doing the wrong thing. They're trying to reinflate the bubble. They are helping to dig us into a deeper ditch. And therefore, it's going to be much more difficult to ever get back to a viable economy again. There's an argument out there, of course, that what the Fed, the Treasury are doing is uh, just enough steps to make sure what is a recession is not a long and, and even more deepening uh, recession, even perhaps a, a depression. You don't subscribe to that notion, but uh, again, no. uh, you want to counter the arguments here. The Fed and the yeah, Treasury well, are doing everything they can to keep this from being worse than it already is. Yeah, well, remember, the people who are arguing that way are the same people who told us there was no problem. They were the same people who were saying how great the economy was two and three years ago when the problems were developing. They were obvious to me, yet most people couldn't see them. And these same people now think this government action is necessary. I can assure you that it's not necessary. In fact, it's counterproductive. Everything the government is doing is going to make the situation. I grant it. We have a major, major problem that requires a serious recession. There's no easy solution. There's no pain free solution. Unfortunately, we have to grin and bear it. But because the government is trying to make everything go away by printing money and, and, and running up bigger deficits, they're simply sowing the seeds for a much greater crisis, which is exactly what they did. Remember, back in 2001 and 2002, had they allowed a more severe recession to take place then, we never would have had a housing bubble. We would not be in the mess we're in now. This is a direct result of the government interfering in the market and trying to postpone the pain. We need to learn from our mistakes, and we need to, you know, we, we need to let the market function. There's some who would argue, again, you point back to the Depression in the 1930s. Ben Bernanke himself, a student, of course, of the Depression. You look at the inaction by the government back then. That's why he and others are taking these steps right now. Why does that, but, you know, uh, why does that historical perspective not resonate with you? Yeah. Well, if Ben Bernanke were my student, I would have flunked him. He obviously learned nothing about the Great Depression. In contrast to what he thinks and what a lot of other people think, uh, the Great Depression was a direct result of interventionist government policy first by Hoover and then by Roosevelt with the New Deal. If you go back to the origins of the problem, in the, in the 1920s, the newly created Federal Reserve was too easy. They kept interest rates too low and they inflated the stock market bubble. Ultimately, that bubble burst. It would have necessitated a very severe recession that might have lasted a year or two. But Hoover, against the advice of his Secretary of the Treasury, refused to allow the free market forces to operate. He propped up companies that were failing. He did all sorts of things to interfere with the market's attempt to correct prices and wages, and that created the Depression. Then when, when Roosevelt came in, 
he actually campaigned against the interventionist actions of Hoover, but then repeated it and, 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 and did it even worse with the New Deal. And they created that Great Depression. Had the market been allowed to function, we wouldn't even have a Great Depression in the history books. And had the Fed not interfered, we never would have had the boom in the 1920s that precipitated the downturn in the first place. So it was an entire creation of government. Unfortunately, now the government is repeating all the mistakes of the 1930s, except since our economy, I think, is in worse shape and since we no longer have the discipline of, um, of gold. Remember, back in the 1930s, the, the, the politicians, the, the rallying cry was, was uh, tax, tax, spend, spend, elect, elect. Well, now the politicians are saying print, elect, elect, what? and the consequences now are going to be worse. Let me just jump in and ask you, against that backdrop, do you see any opportunities for investors out there? If I'm, if I'm correct, I'm hearing you, uh, things are not looking bright here in the United States. What about overseas? Yeah, well, the opportunities are to protect your wealth, to try to preserve your purchasing power by getting out of U.S. dollar-denominated assets, because the biggest casualty is going to be the value of our money. As the government prints all this money to bail everybody out and prop everybody up, the value of the dollar is going to plunge. And so dollar-denominated investments are going to lose value. So investors need to protect themselves. They need to seek out a tax haven from this gigantic inflation tax. They need to invest abroad. Fortunately, during the last year, a lot of foreign markets have gone down in sympathy with the U.S. America is the world's biggest debtor. As we're going broke, it is adversely affecting the financial situation of our creditors. That has produced, a, I think, a fire sale on foreign assets. I think it's a great opportunity for people to load up on quality companies outside the United States and continue to buy precious metals. I still like gold. And I think we've had a major dip in commodities, industrial commodities, energy commodities, agriculture. I think this is one of the best buying opportunities I've seen in commodities in my investment career. Peter Schiff, we will of course have Peter Schiff back to get a, a sense of whether or not his predictions stand up over the course of this next year. Coming up, we're going to take a closer look at today's...